Greetings and welcome to those here present and those who are joining us online for this view on Africa, uh, coming to you from the Institute for Security Studies in Pretoria. I'm Ndubisi Kristen Ani, a researcher at the Peace and Security uh, research program at ISS. Uh, I focus mainly on monitoring and assessing the African Union's peace and security engagement across the continent. So in this view on Africa, I'll be discussing some of the key initiatives of the African Union in some long-standing conflict areas such as Libya, Burundi, and the Central African Republic. Why are we discussing these three crisis areas? It is important for us to discuss these uh, three countries that I mentioned because they are falling under the radar um, over the last year and attention is being placed more on other regions such as South Sudan, um, Mali and Somalia, which is often in the case as usual. The AU remains an important body uh, that influences peace efforts on the continent. Hence, the focus on its intervention in Libya, uh, the Burundi, and Central Africa Republic should help activists, um, civil society organizations, media, and international partners to not only understand the conflict um, situation, but also to enable us all uh, lobby for the enhanced accountability of the AU and other international actors in terms of addressing the suffering of people in the affected areas. We will um, have an elaborate look at the situation in Libya, then followed by Burundi, and then the Central African Republic. In the case of Libya, I will give a brief background, followed by the AU effort and challenges in Libya, and closing with recommendations for the AU moving forward. Some of us are aware that the turmoil that Libya got into since the ouster of Muammar Gaddafi in 2011, but the crisis has continued since then, uh, even though the media has not always uh, captured this uh, crisis, but it has continued since 2011 after the ouster of Gaddafi. Uh, today, Libya faces terror threats, migration challenges, economic downturn, and political turmoil. This is mainly because the UN-backed government that is led by Fayez al-Sarraj is rivaled by two other uh, competing governments, one in Tripoli led by a self-declared government of Khalifa Gwell and another in Tobruk parliament that is supported by General uh, Khalifa Haftar, who controls much of the eastern region. Now, uh, the question is, what has the African Union been doing about the Libyan crisis? Now, at the July summit um, this year, the AU reaffirmed its decision um, to convene a national reconciliation dialogue in Libya. But this has been the AU's point of call since July 2016, and it has not been able to convene the national dialogue. And uh, meanwhile, other countries have led talks. So Italy, for instance, Egypt and France have led some talks to strengthen the failing Libyan political agreement of 2015. Uh, just last month, for instance, France mediated a ceasefire between the Libyan Prime Minister Fayez al-Sarraj, who is backed by the UN, and then uh, General Khalifa Haftar, who has become a formidable force within Libya. Um, well, one of the uh, major talks that people say is that uh, dur as during the 2011 conflict, the AU seemed to be sidelined in those mediation efforts. But the main question is, can the AU get the mediation done? Uh, when assessing the uh, situation uh, together with the um, ISS uh, uh, panel of experts, we begin to see that the Salining story is not entirely the case. While it's, um, it's a case that should be considered, it's not entirely the case because mediation requires um, a regional body to have the capacity to get it done and also to have some leverage uh, on some conflict parties within the region. Allow me to go over some of the challenges the AU faces in terms of mediating in Libya. First, the AU is seen to be coordinate is seen not to be coordinating its effort in Libya appropriately. Based on a consultation uh, on an exclusive report of uh, President Sasson Gesso of um, Congo, who is currently the chairperson of the AU high-level uh, uh, com committee on Libya. 
stakeholders, including um, the current leader, Saraj, have said that various AU initiatives in Libya are incoherent. The efforts of the high-level committee led by Sasson Geso, and then the effort of the high-level representative of the Libya, uh, who is Jakaya Kikwete, and the current AU chairperson, Alpha Conde, are criticized for their lack of coordination within um, Libya. So now you ask the question, um, how will the AU be able to do, get uh, the peace uh, process um, going on? Secondly, the AU uh, can be said to have a limited influence on the warring factions in Libya because it's not a prominent actor in the, in the crisis. Now you will see that the peace talks that have, um, that have been taking place at the moment have been initiated by actors who actually have the influence on the ground, who have been supporting one side of the conflict or another, and they're able to influence, um, bring the members, um, th those warring factions to table. But the AU does not have that political clout. Uh, but you will notice that uh, the AU is also um, has been on, uh, carrying out some consultation within the uh, within Libya, but this is because those warring factions want to legitimize their concerns, uh, but not necessarily. They also know um, quite clearly that the AU cannot um, actually influence them or ha does not have the ac accurate carrots and sticks to get them to the, the negotiating um, table. Now, is there still an opportunity for the AU to mediate in Libya? Indeed, um, from analysis based on a, 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 another angle, you will see that the AU has a neutral stance within Libya per se. And it has a neutral stance in the ongoing war because it's not supporting any sides of the, co um, the conflict. So uh, the challenges aside, other efforts by other actors, as I have mentioned, have not necessarily been as inclusive as uh, the AU will want it to be. Uh, much like the Somalia situation in the early 1990s, many influential local actors, as well as uh, such as community and religious leaders, were left out of the peace talks. Uh, the intervention by France, for instance, uh, failed to include the self-declared uh, government of Khalifa Gwell, which I mentioned earlier, um, in Tripoli, and also the Tobruk parliament. So it only focused on um, mediating um, issues between uh, Al Sarraj and um, Khalifa um, and Haftar, who is the Eastern commander. So now many people are worried that uh, on the ground there might be there might be a problem of getting this uh, peace uh, deal to get to stick. The same goes for the UN-mediated effort that led to the signing of the political agreement of December 2015. Um, it is also seen as done hastily at the expense of sustainability. Uh, notably, you remember that Haftar, who is the uh, who is now the trending uh, power in uh, in Libya, was not included in the peace deal, and other influential actors uh, were not also included in the peace deal. Uh, this was raised uh, uh, by a discussion during a consultation by the AU high-level committee. Um, this document is seen by the PSC uh, report and in which Libyan stakeholders condemned the signing of the political agreement in disregard of the deadline requested and in order to get it more inclusive. And you also see that the overall peace operations has also marginalized the tribal leaders who provide uh, some form of governance to about 70% of Libya. In April this year, uh, 60 tribal leaders from southern Libya signed a peace deal in Rome to cease hostilities and to address the migrant challenges. But in the overall political um, process, these uh, tribal leaders are often not included. Interestingly, the AU position on Libya is all about inclusivity. So this is a leverage that the African Union has. Then what should the AU do to get this done? First, it has to maximize its leverage and strength. So as in the AU as a neutral body has, needs to mobilize powerful actors to get it to support its effort to mediate in the Libyan um, crisis. The AU has to gain the support of the Quartet on Libya. Um, you know that the Quartet is made up of the UN, 
the African Union, the League of Arab States, and the European Union. So these uh, members have already acknowledged the AU's important consultations with stakeholders, which provided unique insight into the Libyan crisis. So the AU has to maximize on these uh, gains to push them to, as the, to give it more responsibility in terms of mediating. Secondly, the AU must improve its capacity to mediate and it should develop um, and establish technical and analytical support teams and ample resources to, to cope with the rigors of, uh, of brokering such a complex piece. And it should also bring together some of Libya's neighbors, such as Egypt, Algeria, as well as Morocco, which has thus far played influential but disparate uh, roles in the conflict. So in summary, I will say that uh, in the Libyan crisis, the EU has played a key role, a key role in Libya, but it now has to maximize its strengths and develop the capacity to lead the mediation effort. This will give it some credibility in the eyes of Libyans and international actors. Now I'll move on to the case of Libya, of Burundi. Uh, let me give you some brief background to the political uh, crisis in Burundi, followed by an overview of AU effort to date, with um, closing the discussion with some recommendations. So now you know that since April 2015, when Nkurunziza announced his intention to run for another term, um, there has been several cases of murder, abduction, and forced disappearances, torture, and other human rights violations in Burundi. Uh, currently, the UN Agency for Refugees estimated that over 420,000 people have fled Burundi to neighboring countries. Um, the main victims of the members are, are always the members of the opposition, as stated by many reports. Indeed, the, um, the June 2017 report by the UN Panel of Experts say that opposition figures and civil society activists, notably human rights um, defenders and journalists, have been primary targets of these abuses. Uh, the panel of experts added that many of the violations have been committed by members of the national intelligence services and the police, and sometimes by the youth league of the ruling party, um, the, um, the Imbone Rekure. So the government has also not been able to bring those, um, those perpetrators of uh, violence to justice. Currently, the government is making effort to amend the constitution, enabling Kukurinziza to stand in, uh, for a fourth term as of 2020. This is widely seen uh, um, in breach of the Burundi constitution and the Arusha Accords. Then what has the AU been doing um, so far? You will recall uh, with me that uh, the AU uh, suggested an African prevention and protection mission in Burundi in, uh, 2015, in 2015 going into 2016. But because the mission is dependent on the consent of the Burundian government, the government rejected the mission and it was not sent. The AU then sent human rights and military experts uh, in 2016 to investigate the abuses, but the Burundian government still refuses to sign a memorandum of understanding to enable those people to work um, effectively on the ground. And then you also recall that the AU established a high-level delegation to Burundi in, in January 2016, but since the high-level delegation went into Burundi in uh, February 2016, they have not been back since. Earlier mediation efforts have been kind of criticized at some times and been boycotted by the opposition, and also the government does not want to dialogue with the main opposition group. Um, at the last AU summit, uh, the continental body made a problematic statement and it which, where it was calling the brilliant um, authorities to build the widest consensus uh, possible for the ongoing process of revising the constitution with participation of all Burundian uh, stakeholders. But you recall with me that the African Union, um, through its African Charter, has re rejects the const um, any constitutional amendment um, especially those that he intends to keep someone, um, a, 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 an individual in power. 
and this is a major challenge. The AU did not say anything about uh, about condemning such move by Burundian government. So this kind of statement could legitimize the effort of the Burundian government to say, okay, yeah, we're getting consultation from everyone, and we're going to amend the constitution. But in all this, one of the key things, um, as some of our, Burind um, Burind uh, our Burundian experts in, uh, in ISS have always stated, that the AU's credibility and the role in Burundi seems to be in doubt because it has not been able to push uh, for what it thought it wants to do in Libya. And they have not been able to pressurize the uh, Burundian government to accept its decision. But don't get me wrong, the Burundian government is also a very tough one, um, and it is not the only one facing such challenges. You recall with me that in December 2017, the parliament of Burundi blocked, um, imposed strict control on international NGOs. And also, the government rejected the United Nations um, uh, deployment of uh, UN police force to monitor the situation in Burundi. It also um, suspended cooperation with the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights and refused to cooperate with the Commission of Inquiry that they established. So, and then uh, lastly, you remember that it took formal steps to withdraw from the ICC in October 2016. But um, in all this uh, kind of difficult situation, what should the AU do to resolve the crisis? The AU has to find ways to make its decision on Burundi stick. This is particularly in terms of getting um, the pla its planned uh, sanction sanctions on targeted individuals in Burundi up and running. And also it has to uh, um, get the buy-in of neighboring states of, Bur of uh, Burundi to play a key role in enforcing the decision, such as the planned AU sanctions on Burundi. So in summary, the Burundian government is the major obstacle to efforts to improve the situation there, and it is essential that the AU has to find ways to maximize its leverage and influence. So lastly, we'll go to another crisis hotspot, which is the last one that I'll be discussing today, and it's the Central Africa Republic. Um, Following a recent escalation in violence, the UN is warning that there is a possibility of genocide in the region and the international community has to act now to address the crisis. Now you will note that for the past four years, since 2013, violence between the uh, predominantly Muslim Seleka militias and predominantly uh, Christian anti-Balaka militias have plagued the Central African Republic. In 2016, the fighting kind of eased, uh, but it uh, fled up again um, uh, um, after the elections um, in 2016. Um, and currently, there have been cases of attack on civilians and also on the UN uh, mission in the Central African Republic, and also um, on aid workers as well. So you see that today, most of the national territory of CAR is under the control of armed groups. And the uh, illegal exploitation of natural resources remain a major source of uh, income for the armed groups. Uh, this has made the country fragile, uh, country's fragile government desperate to re uh, bring stability to CAR. Now let's talk a little bit briefly about what, what the AU has done. Since the uh, beginning of the crisis, the African Union, together with the Economic Community of Central African States, which is known as ECAS, has been leading the peace effort in CAR. It, for instance, facilitated the peace deal that was signed in 2014. But due to the continued fighting, more still needs to be done. In July uh, 2017, during the AU summit, the African Union said it is the lead mediator in the peace process in CAR. Uh, that is, uh, the effort is um, a common initiative by the African Union, um, the ECAS that I mentioned earlier, and the International Conference on the Great Lakes region. This includes um, um, leading states like Angola, Congo, and Chad. Uh, this is meant to bring um, a peace deal between the government and also the 14 armed groups uh, that have been recognized in the region. But ironically, there's no roadmap to get this done at the moment. 
And then secondly, reliable sources also show that the, uh, the AU does not have a special envoy to CAR at the moment. Uh, because the person who has been serving as a special envoy has been appointed to serve uh, with Musa Faki um, at the African Union. So uh, this brings a lot of challenge uh, in terms of knowing what the AU uh, can do in that uh, region. Secondly, the AU initiative is seen by some as an initiative that will push for amnesty for leaders of armed groups. But you re recall with me that this con uh, contradicts the conclusion of the May 2015 Bangui Forum on National Re Reconciliation that calls for um, justice in CAR. This includes the provisions of the Special Criminal Court that was promulgated into law on 3 June 2015 by uh, Catherine Samba Panza. So uh, the court is meant to bring perpetrators to justice. But now, uh, one of the key issues that have been in Central Africa Republic is that because there is no adequate justice um, in the situation, there is no justice in CAR, uh, there, there has often been um, cases of impunity and armed groups continue the war unabated. Well, we can criticize the AU for saying that it wants uh, to get some amnesty. Some groups will say that uh, it's a way of prioritizing peace by giving incentive for warring parties to lay down their arms. This is because both the government and also the international community are still struggling to get the a right incentive for armed groups to lay down their weapons. Um, it's important for me to also mention that the African Union is not alone in its involvement in CAR. There is the Roman Catholic St. Egidio uh, Peace Group that is leading a rather promising peace effort. In, um, and you note that uh, in Rome on uh, 19 June 2017, this group facilitated an agreement between armed groups, including a countrywide ceasefire. This is the fifth agreement signed by armed groups in four years. And the worrying case is that after those agreements have been signed, after those agreements have been signed, there's an upsurge in violence again. And after this recent one, there's an upsurge in violence in the country's eastern uh, province. So, um, but one of the key questions that people always face is that uh, how is there is no ample coordination between the St. Egidio's um, mediation effort and also that of the African Union. And there is little clarity on how those uh, two will complement each other. So in our opinion, it is important for the AU to find ways to cooperate with the Santa Diego uh, so that they should maximize uh, the gains that is already secured in the region. This is to um, avoid parallel and disparate initiatives in the region. So in summary, uh, in terms of Central Africa Republic, the AU has to uh, deploy an envoy soon to the Central Africa Republic, and it also has to um, come out decisively to get mediation process up and running in Central Africa Republic. The AU also should mobilize resources to ensure that the government is able to provide services to regions that are outside the Bangui region, which has been the major recipient of um, government services.